Hello and welcome to Flashback. My name's Matt Christie and this time I travel back to March 15th, 1991. And a little over a year had passed since the most shocking result in boxing history, Buster Douglas knocking out Mike Tyson in 10 rounds. Since then, Tyson had won twice, beating Henry Tillman inside a round and beating Alex Stewart also in the opening session. As a result of those two quick wins, they were quite impressive. Many people were of the train of thought that that loss to Douglas was an aberration. And here we analyse his impending showdown with Razor Ruddock. One punch away is the line on the, uh, on the front page. Uh, Mike Tyson could be just one punch away from fighting for his old world heavyweight title when he takes on dangerous Canadian Donovan Razor Ruddock in Las Vegas. Um, the general feeling here was that it was a good matchup, Razor Woodock, a worthwhile contender, um, but it would just be a quick night for Mike Tyson. I think the official prediction was that he would win in three or four rounds maximum. Um, but actually what happened is, is that we really saw signs for the first time that that loss to Douglas was perhaps not just an aberration after all as Tyson struggled at times, he was sluggish at times, eventually stopping Ruddock in the seventh round, a controversial finish when referee Richard Steele deemed that Ruddock was in no position to continue. The controversial finish triggered calls for a rematch that came along. Tyson again struggled, again failed to reproduce his old magic as he went 12 rounds, winning clearly but unimpressively. After that, of course, the stage was set at last for Mike Tyson to regain his world heavyweight title. Um, but of course he went down, he was incarcerated for three years after being found guilty of rape. And Tyson didn't actually get the chance to fight again for his world heavyweight title until quite a number of years later, eventually dethroning Frank Bruno in 1996 before going on to lose his titles to Evander Holyfield in another massive upset. Um, but that was the story of this week, March 15th, 1991, that Tyson, we thought, was one punch away, whereas he was more like five years away. Underneath, one year away, we say, for Lennox Lewis, who took on Gary Mason in what was then his toughest test to date. Gary Mason, unbeaten in 35 victories, lofty WBC ranking at number four. Uh, but Mason, as Daniel Herbert, uh, respected boxing writer and Boxing News' own for such a long time, said that Mason myth is exposed by the class of Lewis. Lennox speed and jab are too much, he said, um, and he thought the fact that Mason, who was on the judges' scorecards at the time of the sixth round finish, was ahead on one card and level on two, was being very, very kind to Mason. Herbert really summed up that Mason was outclassed throughout, never looked like he could win, but Lennox Lewis himself would perhaps disagree with that assessment. Lewis often states that Mason, and let's not forget that Lennox Lewis went in with the likes of Evander Holyfield, with Mike Tyson, with Razor Ruddock, um, that Mason was one of his toughest, toughest rivals. After this fight though, we didn't see a great deal more of Mason. He suffered a horrendous eye injury in battle. Um, it was a detached retina. He didn't fight in Britain again. He was forced to fight out in America against nondescript opposition but his career effectively over at this point after what was quite an interesting fight. If we move on through, there's quite a lot going on, particularly in the world scene of boxing. Tony Tucker um, failed a drug test after winning the Californian title. Tucker, four or five years removed from his brief IBF reign, um, and looking back on the career of Tony Tucker, when he came onto the scene in the mid to late 80s, he really was an impressive specimen, giving a peak Mike Tyson all he could handle in a 1987 unification showdown. Um, but Tucker really fell foul to the temptations of out-of-the-ring activities, namely drugs, namely alcohol and that sort of thing, uh, never did fulfil his potential. He would not be the first and he certainly hasn't been the last. Also, more heavyweight action. Terrible Tim Witherspoon wins a bore over Carl Williams in a battle of American contenders. Okay, it was a dreadful contest, so we won't stick around on that subject too much longer. Facing that page, there was veteran campaigner Bobby Chez, who started his career at middleweight, 
top prospect in middleweight, eventually won a light heavyweight title, IBF light heavyweight title, beating Slobodan Kakar to win the title, was one of the most entertaining fighters in the sport at that time. Um, lost his title in an upset to Prince Charles Williams in, I think, 1987. Um, but he rebounded here in 1991 to upset the odds and win a world title, his second world title, up at Cruiserweight, the WBA belt, when he beat the quite well-regarded champion at the time, Robert Daniels, via a hard-fought 12-round decision. And our reporter there, the one and only Nigel Collins, actually saying that Bobby Chairs was boxing as well, if not better than at any point in his career. Um, but yeah, all interesting times. Let's keep on moving through. And Larry Holmes, he came back this week. He was due to fight um, Tim Anderson, um, a journeyman really. Um, but Larry Holmes had been inspired by the successful comeback of George Foreman. Um, and he believed that he could come back and rule the world. Once again, of course, Holmes had initially won the title in 1978, lost it in 1985, was beaten by Mike Tyson in 1988, and at that point was 38 or 39 years old, and everybody thought he was washed up, had no chance. Scorn was poured all over his comeback attempt at this point. But what Holmes would do, although he didn't regain his championship, he cemented his place as a contender in the division for much of the decade, um, giving Evander Holyfield tough fights, beating Ray Mercer, giving Oliver McCall a tough test, far surpassing any expectations that the vast, vast majority had of Larry Holmes in his comeback. And let's not forget, 1990s was a tough and a thoroughly entertaining world heavyweight era. That will do it. I feel like I've been talking for about three days. Thanks for your attention, if I've still got it. If not, I hope to be a bit more interesting next time. That was Flashback. Thank you very much.